A couple months ago, I posted this and got railed in the comments for skill issues. I have never been a huge fan of the custom $5 VPS way of hosting your applications. I've always preferred to use a more managed service. I've just found that every time I try and do it, I go through, I set a bunch of stuff up and then it just becomes really complicated and run into all these edge cases and it just, it never really works out until recently when I've started going into this little pocket base plus felt kit stack where I wanted to host it. This would be the perfect stack for hosting these applications because they're going to be really simple. They're going to be really small. And I feel like it'd be really cool to be able to set up a bunch of personal applications written with this stack all on my own custom $5 VPS server running in an EC2 instance. That's just mine. This is the infra of the app I ended up hosting. It is insanely simple. It is literally, there's no like fancy stuff anywhere else. No databases, no queues, no managed services, literally just an EC2 instance hosted on AWS running Ubuntu. And that's it. That's the entire infrastructure for this app. I technically do have a um, like persistent volume over here. So like we do have um, high performance storage so that we can persist user information and have a SQLite database for our pocket base instance. But that's really just kind of a subset of this EC2. You set it up through the EC2. It's all really part of the same thing. And the way I got this working was actually with Docker. I found that this was the quickest and easiest way to get things going. I had a lot of trouble in the past getting this working, getting everything set up. Clearly, I have learned a lot since then, and really even in the last year, because this was actually very, very easy to set up. It was just an Ubuntu instance. So I just set it up like a normal Ubuntu instance. And then in order to hook up like um, public networking so I could access the actual application, all I did was set up Nginx to serve HTTP requests on port 80. I opened that port up to the public in the EC2 dashboard. And I went ahead and spun up my Docker server, mapped the port to, uh, I think, 8090. And then I, in Nginx, routed 8090 to 80. And then we just served it from there. And it just kind of worked. But yeah, this entire thing is literally just a little Docker image chilling in an Ubuntu server, which I'll SSH into and show you how it works in a second here. That's just serving traffic through Nginx and it works really well. The actual application I ended up putting in here is just an ideas tracker thing. It's literally just where I can go on my phone, type in the idea, select the type of idea it is, and then hit save. And when I save that, it would get persisted into my Notion or some other system, depending on what the idea was about. And that's the whole app. So the way I actually deploy this is with Docker. Like I said, I think that ended up making it way simpler, although I easily could have done this by just doing it with normal Node.js or whatever because like I said it was just an Ubuntu instance and I'm very comfortable with Linux and setting up Ubuntu and installing a bunch of stuff now obviously this is missing a ton of the really important features that all the like managed hosting providers have which I'll talk about later so I'm not really advocating this as a replacement to those I'm just saying that for these smaller things it is way easier than I thought it was and I really did end up kind of enjoying working with it and this Docker file to me felt like kind of the best way to do it because that way I don't have to spin up Golang. I don't have to spin up Node. I don't have to spin up all these things on the actual EC2 instance itself, especially since the instance I got was really underpowered. It's like the free T4 nano instance. So going through and building that and doing all this stuff on the actual instance itself would kind of suck. But if I just go ahead and have a Docker file here, build a Docker image and then run Docker pull on my little EC2 instance, then it gets really lightweight and easy. So that's what I did. What I ended up doing, and a couple of you in the last video when I talked about Svelte and Pocket Base recommended this, so thank you, is I ended up actually building this so that the Svelte Kit app, when built, is served through the Pocket Base instance. So this Docker file is actually quite simple. All we're really doing here is in this first part here, we're just building our Svelte Kit app. And then in this next part here, we're building our Pocket Base instance. And then finally here at the end, when we actually want to serve this, the way we're doing that is we're just going through and we're copying out the binary from this Pocket Base build step here. So we built our Go binary. We copy that over into this final image. Then we go ahead and grab the built Svelte Kit files from the build web, because remember, the Svelte Kit app is just static HTML because we're doing everything client side. I'm not doing a server or anything like that. So we can just serve the static HTML from our pocket base app. I'm putting that in the PB public directory that I just serve my server. And then if you go into our actual instance here, which is on like some random ass IP, yeah, if we go in here, it just works. This is the actual Svelte Kit app being served and it's working through the pocket base backend. If I went ahead and I went back to this and then I go to the underscore here, this will take me into my admin dashboard. And you can see this is like the live public version of pocket base working a uh, fun little side note here too. make sure you don't accidentally deploy sensitive stuff to your thing 
because this random IP, there's like these crawlers going through it. Someone somehow somewhere found this IP and has just been sending get requests to try and get like my .env file to try and get my like uh, send some like messages or some shit just looking for random just dumb security errors which you could have made. So clearly there are bots out there that are crawling for these things so make sure you protect those. Uh, the good news is here you can see in the docker file we're not including any of those. We're including the output of our web build here which is literally just a bunch of html and then we're including our binary for our um, pocket base app and that's it nothing else so it is nice and secure there's nothing important that they can get out of this and yeah that's kind of the entire application the way we run this is the way you actually work with this is that you can just ssh into it so i got fancy with it i set up the nice little ssh client locally so where i can just uh give it a name here and i can just ssh into my pocket ec2 give it a second here to load and yell at me that it wants to upgrade the kernel which we'll do at some point but you can see here if i just hit ls this is just an Ubuntu instance. The way I set this up is I installed Docker onto it. So if I do Docker PS, yeah, if I run Docker PS, you can see right here, I have the BM Davis uh, dev, then PBID as latest running. And that is literally just this Docker file. I'm running this image and I didn't build this image on the actual EC2 instance. I tried doing that, just cloning the repo and then running Docker build. It was taking like 30 minutes and it was not building. It was not powerful enough at all. So the way I ended up actually doing this is I would just build this image locally on my computer. I actually, for the first time, ended up using uh, Docker Hub. I used Docker Hub to push the image itself up. I would build it on my computer, push it up, and then just pull it down on my actual EC2 instance. And then I was able to easily serve my application that way, which felt like a really good process. This was, like I said, not one tenth as hard as I thought it would be. Uh, the Nginx stuff was really simple. I just went into Claude 3.5 and was like, hey, how do I do this? And it told me, made it super easy. And yeah, that's kind of it. I want to wrap this up with kind of going over my thoughts on this whole thing. Uh, like I alluded to earlier, I'm not going to be deploying any of my big, complicated, serious projects this way. There's no way in hell Insider Viz is getting deployed to an EC2 instance with like a Docker file set up in this weird custom jank way. The fact that every time in Insider Viz we make changes, I push up some changes here, I instantly get that deployed to a preview instance in Vercel, I can go through, check that, manage it, and then deploy it, and the whole thing is out in production within like two minutes with no downtime, is so valuable. I know that there are ways that you can do this with a more low-level infrastructure. SST is one of the biggest ones I've seen where you get these really great DX experiences that you would get from a Vercel or a Koyeb or a Railway or whatever, while still getting the power and flexibility of AWS. That is definitely something we'll eventually explore, but not today. For right now, this is working really, really well, and I don't wanna give this up for my big projects. But having the ability to do this, I think is really cool, and it is very useful to be able to just spin up what is effectively a little mini computer in the cloud and do whatever you want on here. I could put background processes on this, I could put queues on this, I could set up simple web servers on here, and for internal or personal stuff, this is incredibly useful and valuable. So I highly recommend you guys go through and try this out. I'll have linked down below the open source code base that has this uh, Docker file in it. And then I'll also go through and update the readme to give you some basic instructions on how to get started with the EC2 stuff. I don't think I'm ever going to do a full tutorial on how to do the EC2 deployment and all that stuff because I kind of went back and forth on this and I know this might sound kind of weird. But there are a lot of ways that AWS can go very wrong. And to me, at least it feels like you should, if you're going to be trying to use AWS and go through and set up custom EC2 instances and all that stuff, you should be able to do it without a video tutorial. Like if you're at the point where you can comfortably just kind of do most of this off the dome, because really all of this was done off the top of my head, except I had to look up the Nginx stuff because I've never used it, but everything else was just pretty normal stuff. Oh, and the Docker file. I'm not going to pretend for a second. I knew how to set up the like base PNPM home directory shit and all that stuff. I have no idea. But the rest of this, yeah, this is all just kind of me figuring it out. I didn't copy paste this out of anywhere. I think you need to be able to understand all of the stuff that's going on here at at least this level. Like you should be able to read this Docker file and have a very good idea of what's going on. And you should be able to open up a fresh Ubuntu instance and install Git, install PNPM or NPM or Node or whatever you want to use and get all your stuff working there and running before you actually go and try and do this. I think it's one of those things where if you're at the point where you should be screwing around with this and using it, 
you don't need the video. So I don't think I'm going to end up making a video on this. I might change my mind in the future, but that's my current thoughts on it. And yeah, if you guys enjoyed this, make sure you like and subscribe and I will uh, talk to you soon.